Now that we have discussed the population regression equations and the population error term, it's time to move to the sample side of the story. So let me give you a quick overview of the concepts that we have covered till now. To explain you the population side of the story in a simple manner, I started working with this data that is population data. I explained you how to read this table and then we converted this table into a scatter plot. In this scatter plot, these red dots are the conditional means of y and when we join these conditional means of y, we get this blue line which we call population regression line. And this line is helping us with the quantification of the relationship between the y variable and the x variable on an average basis. And then we discussed these three population regression equations where I also introduced the population error term that is ui. So this is all about the population side of the story. Let's move to the sample side now. See, this population data that I showed you earlier, this is actually a hypothetical data. Because in real life, we never have the population data. And the reason is that the population is huge and if you try to collect the population data, it is going to be really costly and time consuming. Think of it in this manner. Let's say that you are interested in finding the relationship between income and food consumption for the households living in London. So in this particular example, your population is all the households that are living in London. Now, are you going to collect the data for entire London? You won't do that, right? Because to collect the population data, you will have to go to each and every household in London, which is simply not possible. So instead of collecting the population data, we are going to select a random sample of households from London and then we can analyze these households to say something about the relationship between income and food expenditure for the households who live in London. So that means in real life, you never work with population data, you will always work with sample data. And the sample data is a subset of the population data. So let's see how can we get the sample data from this population data. So as you can see in this population data, the independent variable is weekly income and the notation that we have for this independent variable is x and the dependent variable is weekly expenditure on food and the notation that we have for this is y. So in our sample, we will have data on two variables, x and y. Now, as you can see over here, there are some x values written in this blue line. So these are the x values that we have. And then for every x value, there are multiple y values. So let's see how are we going to write this in our sample. So the first value of x that we have here is 120. So we can write 120 over here. Now for x equal to 120, we have seven y values over here. And for the sample data, we have to choose any one value out of these seven y values. So that means in the sample data, you have only one y value corresponding to one x value. So let's say I select this one. So I can write 91 over here. Similarly, for x equal to 150, we have multiple y values in the population data. But for the sample, we are just going to select one y value out of these seven values. And let's say we select 134. So I'm going to write 134 over here. And we have to do the same exercise for the other x values as well. So for x equal to 180, let's say we select 119. So this is over here. For x equal to 210, Let's say we select 140. So we can write it over here. Similarly, let's say for x equal to 240, we select 174. So it's over here. And we can do the same thing for the other x values as well. So I have completed the sample data and this is how it looks like. Now there are three points that you have to note over here. The first point is structure of the data. So if you take a look at the population data, you can see that population data is quite a rich data. For every x value, we have multiple y values. 
On the other hand, when we talk about the sample data, we do not have the luxury of having multiple y values for a single x value. In the sample data for a single x value, we just have one y value. Okay. So from now on, whenever I say the word population data, you have to visualize a table like this. And whenever I say the word sample data, you have to visualize something like this. Okay, so that's the first thing that you have to keep in mind. The second thing is number of columns in sample data. See over here, we have two columns in sample data. One column is for the X variable and the other column is for the Y variable. And this is because in our story, we are dealing with two variables. So it's not necessary that in the sample data, you are always going to have two columns. Basically, the number of columns that you're going to have depends on how many variables you're working with. So in the simple linear regression framework, we work with two variables, one dependent variable and one independent variable. So we have two columns over here. But later on, when you're going to study multiple linear regression, at that time, you will deal with multiple independent variables at a time. And over there in the sample data, you will have multiple columns. So basically, you're going to have one column for every variable that you are dealing with. Okay, so over here, this number of columns is actually equal to number of variables that you are dealing with. And when I say number of variables, I mean total number of variables, the dependent as well as independent. Okay, so that's the second thing. And the third thing that you have to note over here is the sample size. So by sample size, we mean the total number of observations that we have in the sample. So for example, this is the first observation in this sample. So basically the first observation is a particular household with weekly income of $120 and with weekly expenditure on food that is $91. Similarly, this is the second observation. Basically the second observation is a particular household with a weekly income of $150 and a weekly food expenditure of $134. Similarly, this is your third observation. This is fourth. This is fifth observation, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth. So in this particular sample, in total, we have data on 10 observations. That means the sample size is equal to 10. And the notation that we have for the sample size is small n. So we are going to use the lowercase n to denote the sample size. So over here, small n is equal to 10. Okay. I hope this much is clear. So now let's understand what is the information that we are getting from this sample and how can we use that information to quantify the relationship between Y variable and X variable. So this is the sample data that we have. And as you can see over here, the X values in this sample data are written in an increasing order. So the X values are going from 120 to 150, 150 to 180, 180 to 210 and so on. But the Y values are written in a random manner. So let's try to see what information we are getting from here. So when X increases from 120 to 150, the Y value increases from 91 to 134. So if we take a look at the first two observations, it seems like there is a positive relationship between Y variable and X variable. However, when X increases from 150 to 180, Y value decreases from 134 to 119. So if we take a look at the second and the third observation, it seems like there is a negative relationship between the X variable and the Y variable because over here the X variable is increasing but the Y variable is going down. Let's analyze this further. So when X increases from 180 to 210, Y increases from 119 to 140. So it seems like there is a positive relationship. When X increases from 210 to 240, Y increases from 140 to 174. Seems like a positive relationship. When X increases from 240 to 270, Y increases from 174 to 203. Again, a positive relationship. And then when X increases from 270 to 300, Y decreases from 203 to 182. So if you take a look at these two observations, it seems like there is a negative relationship between the Y variable and the X variable. Similarly, we can take a look at the last three observations as well. The crux of the story is that if you try to take a look at the sample data, 
Sometimes it seems that there is a positive relationship between these two variables and sometimes it seems that there is a negative relationship between these two variables. So by taking a look at this sample data, we are not able to figure out that what is it that is the relationship between the x variable and the y variable. Is it a positive one or is it a negative one? So let's try to do one thing. Let's try to convert this table into a scatter plot. And that's the beauty of simple linear regression. Basically, in simple linear regression, we work with two variables. So it's quite easy to make a scatter plot and visualize the information. So let's do that over here. So this is the scatter plot of this sample data. So when x is 120, then y is taking the value 91. So this dot is actually 91. Similarly, when x is 150, in the sample data, we can see that the value of y is 134. So this dot is 134 and so on. Okay. So this is how we have created the scatter plot. Now see in this scatter plot, when we are increasing the x value, the y value is sometimes increasing and it is sometimes decreasing. So as you can see, sometimes the dots are going up and sometimes the dots are going down. However, there is one thing that is quite clear from here that when we increase the x value on an average basis, the y value is also increasing. And I know this because I can see that these dots are going upwards. So if you try to take a look at the individual dots, they will sometimes go up, they will sometimes go down. But if you try to take a look at the scatter plot on an average basis, you will see an upward trend over here, which is kind of giving us this information that if we increase the x value, then on an average basis, the y value is also increasing. Okay, so the scatter plot is able to provide some more information as compared to this table. Now we have to learn that how can we quantify the relationship between the y variable and the x variable. See, I told you earlier that for the quantification purposes, we need to have a line. When we were working with the population data, it was quite a simple task to fit a line. Because in the population data for any x value, we used to have multiple y values. So the population figure used to be something like this. So for any x value, we used to have multiple y values. So in the population data, we just found the conditional mean of these y values. And then we join these conditional means. And this line is the population regression line. So in the population data, it was really simple to fit this particular line. But in real life, you don't have the population data. So you don't have this line. So now you have to figure out how can you fit a line in this particular scatter plot. Basically, the problem over here is that in the population data for every x value, you had multiple y values. So you were able to find the conditional means of those y values and then you just join those conditional means. In the sample data, we do not have that luxury. In the sample data for every x value, we just have a single y value. So we cannot find the conditional means and just join those conditional means to find the line. So we will have to follow some sort of technique over here to sort this. Well, actually we do have a method that we follow to fit a line in the sample data, but I'm not going to explain you that method in detail in this video. That is something that we will discuss in detail in my upcoming videos. However, over here, let me try to provide you some intuition that how to go about fitting a line in the sample data. So see, our problem statement is that we want a line over here, which will quantify the relationship between the x variable and the y variable. So let me give you two line options over here and let's see which one do you choose. And the lines that I'm going to draw, these are not the exact lines. These are just some rough lines that I'm drawing to give you some intuition. So let's say the first line that we have is this. And let's say the second line that we have is this. Okay. So I've given you two line options over here. It's not necessary that these lines have to be parallel. This is just a rough figure. So there is a red line and there is a green line. Now I want you to think for a second that out of these two lines, the red line and the green line, which line are you going to prefer? Well, in my opinion, you should prefer the red line over the green line. And the reason is that if you take a look at the red line, the red line is much more closer to the blue points as compared to the green line. So think of it in this manner that when x is 120, then y is taking the value 91. 
Well, this blue dot that you see over here, this is your actual data point. Okay, so all the blue dots that you see over here, these are your actual data points because this is what you have actually collected in your sample data. So this blue dot is your first actual data point. Now for x equal to 120, the red line is giving you this and the green line is giving you this. And as you can see, the difference over here is quite less as compared to the difference over here. Similarly, for x equal to 150, this is your actual data point. Okay. And for this particular value of x, the red line is giving you this point and the green line is giving you this point. Once again, the difference between the actual data point and what the red line is giving you is less as compared to the difference between these two. And you can do this exercise for any of the points over here. So for example, for x equal to 300, this is your actual data point and the red line is over here. So this is the difference between the red line and the actual data point. But if you take a look at the green line, then the difference between the green line and the actual data point for x equal to 300 is quite large. Okay. And this is the reason we believe that red line is a much better fit as compared to the green line because the red line is much more closer to the actual data points that we have. And this is the intuition that I want you to keep in mind. So this line that we are trying to fit over here, the name that we have for this line is sample regression line. Basically, this sample regression line is the sample counterpart of the population regression line. The sample regression line can also be called line of best fit. So I will be using these interchangeably. And over here, we have learned the intuition behind getting this line of best fit. We have learned that the sample regression line should be constructed in such a manner that the distance between the line and the actual data points should be as minimum as possible. So this is the intuition that we have developed over here. Keep this intuition with you. In my upcoming videos, I will talk about the method that we follow to get this sample regression line in a much more detailed manner. Okay, so I hope this much is clear. So in this particular video, we have learned that how the sample data looks like. We have also seen that how can we convert the sample data into a scatter plot. And we have developed some intuition regarding how to get the sample regression line once we have the scatter plot. Okay, so this is all for this video. In my next video, we will discuss more things about the sample side of the story and we will also take a look at the sample equations.